Hey, this is here from No Sleep Creative. Today we're gonna create this intro opening animation I made for my friend Anna's whole YouTube channel. I hope you love the show today. Here's a breakdown of how we're gonna do this. First, we animate a square and two lines appearing in the scene. Then we have four circles animating off screen, overlapping on screen, and off screen again. Next, we create two circles as alpha mat using blending modes. We'll duplicate the previous setup, change the colors to create three more variants, and use radial wipe to create the quadrants. Next, we'll animate a sparkle using a line shape layer, and then we can duplicate the sparkles and position it around the text at random interval. Finally, we put everything together with additional scale and rotation animation. Now that we understand how everything works, let's begin this tutorial. In After Effects, create a composition that is 1920 by 1920, 24 frames per second with a white background, and click OK. And the first thing you want to do is to select the rectangle tool and double click on it. And we want to remove the fill and have a stroke about 5. So I'm going to press 5. And you want to press UU to open up the size. And we're going to put a keyframe at a start with 0. And then let's go down about 21 frames over here to this marker to about 1350 okay and then next thing we're gonna do let's also rename this to square and the next thing we're gonna do is to double click on the rectangle tool again so we're gonna create the lines so let's rename this lines and press UU again and uncheck constraint proportion and reduce the X to zero so this gives us a single line and then duplicate the rectangle shape layer and open the properties, open the transform, and go into rotation and set it to 90 degrees. And now select the shape layer, press R for the rotation and set it to 45 degrees. So we have an X and we are going to use the trim path to animate the review. So go open up the shape layer at trim path and we're gonna set a keyframe for the end. So somewhere around, around here, around one second, it will complete and we start off with zero. And there we go. The first step is complete. And let's just call this blue. And the next thing we want to do is to create a circle. So let's select our ellipse tool. We're going to create that radial arrangement of circle. And let's call this uh, C underscore fill. And we're just going to give it a color. Uh, so I have my colors over here. So I'm going to use this red. And we can keep the stroke for now. I'm going to color it uh, yellow. And I am going to go into my repeater tool, add a repeater. And then also let me reduce the size of the circle so you guys can see clearly what's going on. So I'm going to reduce the size about 10% and also turn off the, my other two layers. So I'm going to go open up the contents, go into repeater, set the copy down to four, open up transform, reduce the position to zero and increase the rotation by 90 degrees. And now if I increase the y-axis for the anchor point, you can see it arranged itself in this uh, radio arrangement. And so that's cool. But one thing to note is that it ha if I were to turn on the anchor points, right, you can notice it's, it's still using the first circle as an anchor point. So we got to center it accordingly uh, based on this fourth circle. So let's press A to open our anchor point. We're going to write a simple expression using the source rec function. So we're going to create a variable s is equals to source rec at time semicolon and it's square bracket s dot left plus s dot with divided by two and then for the y-axis s dot top plus s dot high divided by two and this will lock the anchor point to the center right there you go and then let's also uh, let's press UU to get our properties again. And we're going to set a keyframe for the anchor point for the transform uh, under the repeater. And also we want to reduce the increase the scale back to 100 again. And let's set a keyframe. Let's press U to get our anchor point. So you want to set it about like 1920. So it will be like right outside the composition. And then I actually have some animation marker prepare here so I can see uh, what to animate. So somewhere around here, right, is where I am going to put, uh, where it's gonna re where it's gonna come into frame. So it's gonna come into frame at about, wait, let's see. It's gonna go from 1920 
Oops, sorry. Let's go from 1920 from at zero, and it's gonna come in to about 1,000. I think 1,350, where it's like touching. So maybe that's a little bit too much. So let's reduce it. Boing. Actually, we we increased it. So somewhere where it's just touching, all the circles are touching. Very nice. And it's just gonna hold its value for about you know a few frames. And then after that, it's just gonna overlap itself. Uh, so something like so over here, it's gonna overlap. So it's gonna go back to negative nineteen twenty. So I'm gonna play it. So it's gonna come in, stay in place for that few frames, well about two frames actually, and then it's gonna overlap itself. So one thing you realize is that the lines, the, the stroke are not intersecting. The fill is kind of covering them up. So what we can do is to command D to get the fill and then just, just change this, rename this to uh, C underscore stroke, get rid of the fill, and we keep only the stroke. And we just also want to just get rid of the stroke for the for the fill for the first uh for the circle fill, right? Just in case uh, uh if anything happens, it's just good to turn it off. And we're almost done uh with this with this setup. And the next thing we want to do is to just uh create a circle, the black circle in the center. So I'm gonna go to my ellipse tool, double click on it. Let's name this. So uh we just need to for this one. Let's give it a black fill, right? And turn on preserve print underlying transparency, which is next to the blending mode. And I'm gonna put it, uh, yes, it needs to be on top of the stroke and fill layer that we have. And we can put the line and square on, on at the top for now. Uh, and if you notice that if I were to turn on and off the underlying transparency, you can see it's actually boring the alpha of what the layers beneath. So I'm gonna name this C underscore center and then just label it red. So it, we just need to animate it, the scale, right? Press S, animate it from, let's see, let's put it about, let's start, obviously we start from zero and then we are gonna go to 50 and then it's gonna hold for a few frames and then it's just gonna go to zero. So let me set it to zero like that. So somewhere around here. Yes. So maybe we want the circle to start a little bit later. So let's get, grab the C and stroke fill and just push it by one frame like that. Or we can just, yeah, yeah, let's just move the keyframes. So let's grab all the keyframes over here. Let's press U actually. And uh, just to speed things up, I'm just going to use an easy ease. I'm sure you guys can take the time to uh, play with the, with the graph editor. And next, we're going to create the stencil, uh, the alpha mats using uh, more shape layers. So let's double click on the ellipse tool. And I'm going to name this mat underscore stencil. Okay, and then I'm going to change the blending mode to, to stencil alpha. And you can see everything is cropped within the circle. So basically the alpha mat is cutting everything below the layer. I'm gonna duplicate this and then this this mat will be called mat underscore I guess uh silhouette. So it will do we're gonna do the reverse to kind of hide the to kind of uh hide the animation. So we're gonna change the silhouette uh, silhouette alpha for the blending mode and we're gonna animate the scale. So the thing about silhouette alpha is that let me just if I play around the scale, you can see I'm basically we're gonna create uh the circle going from smaller to bigger to hide the animation. So I want it to be around here, so where it so it starts at zero, and then somewhere around here, it's where it becomes a hundred. Oh, I forgot to set a keyframe, so let's do it again. And so it's gonna animate in. And then it's gonna animate out using the silhouette alpha, uh, silhouette alpha blending mode, like that. So we might might want to be faster. So let's open up a graph editor and maybe just like make the slope the slope steeper in the middle, like that. 
So kind of like an exponential uh, animation curve. All right, and we're done with the setup. And now we're gonna create variants, uh, three more variants of this setup. And you can easily go into the project panel and duplicate it, but then, and then change the color by opening it up. But that's, but there's a better way to do it. And we're gonna make use of this thing called master properties. Master properties allow us to specify what properties are editable from one source composition and create var multiple variants. So to demonstrate, first we need to go to Window, Essential Graphic, and then you're gonna select the composition that you want to build the master composition on, the master properties on. So we got, I'm just gonna select uh, my current composition, Base01, and I can go into my fill, I'm gonna pause the animation here, I can go into my fill layer, right, my circle fill, and go to fill, and I can just click and drag the color over here. So right now I have an expression, so I'm gonna just unlink it over here. Uh, so what? So I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna grab the fill color and just drop drop it in. And I'm gonna do it for the center circle as well. I'm gonna to go to content ellipse, go to ellipse path, and then I'm gonna go into not ellipse path, but the the fill, and grab the color. And I can actually rename this property. So the first one will be primary and the second one will be secondary. So now I can just collapse everything and I can just change the color from here if I want to. So this is very good when you're just building two kits and you just want, so these are the, basically the settings you want your user to change. Uh, so they don't need to open up the composition and uh, open up the layers and find the keyframes or find which one are editables. Now, uh, but that's not what we're looking for. What we want to do now is that in a new composition, which I have over here, so make a new composition that is full HD, right? 1920 by 1080, eight seconds long. And I'm just gonna close this essential graphics panel and drop our base composition over here. Okay, the beauty of essential graphic is that we can create variants just from one source composition. So if I press UU now, you can see we have a new property group over here called master properties. You can also access it just by collapsing the layer, just by, you know, through the drop, drop down. And then you can change the color to something else, like green. And then you can change it to maybe something yellow or orange. And if you, so the animation, you know, still, still, is, is still working, all right? And if you go into the base, uh, into our base composition, the colors are still the same. So I can just even duplicate more of these, right? And just change the color and nothing, my previous, uh, I can still, preserve my original setup. As you can see over here. Yeah, right, so I'm gonna just scale this down to 45. And then the, you can also push the colors that, the, the changes that you, you have to the composition. So you're gonna push it, push the colors back to the base composition. You can see now it has, you know, copied the properties from our, our main com over here. And I'm gonna undo that. You can also do the reverse. You put, you want to reset it back to normal. You can just click the button on the left hand side. And I'm gonna name the first one master for now. And then we're gonna duplicate three more variants. Uh, so let's duplicate it, this. And so we're gonna have one at the bottom. I'm also actually gonna delete all these markers because it's very distracting. And then so. I wanted to bob. We're gonna create the quadrant design. So one will be left, one will be right, and then one at the bottom. So I'm gonna turn off the master for now. And then what I want to do next is to go to my effects and preset panel, shortcut command five, and I'm gonna type in radio white, which I already typed it in here. Double click on it, and set the transition completion to seventy five percent. And you can see that. Uh, let's see. First of all, they're all the same color. I need to change the color their color for, uh, to something else. I'm gonna press UU to open up my color properties and I'm just gonna assign all my colors. So I gotta change it to this dark red and then after that, I'm gonna change it to this brown and this green, pink. And then we're gonna do pink again and then we're gonna end off with this dull red again. Uh, very cool. And now we can collapse everything. And then you can see we have one quadrant over here with the radio wipe. And I'm gonna copy this effect, radio wipe, and put paste it on my R layer. And I'm just gonna shift it, shift the start angle to 180 degree. And we can see we have developed this quadrant over here. 
And uh, let's see. So the next thing we wanted, so if we were to play it now, you can see because everything is based on the same layer, the aligns, everything aligns properly. All right. And I am just going to shift all these layers to somewhere around a few frames down, like here, right? I want to start later. And I want to actually parent, parent it to left. So we just need to animate the scale and the rotation to be somewhat. So we're going to start at negative 135 degree. And then over here, it's going to be, oh, I think I typed the wrong number. So it's going to go from, set a keyframe. It's going to go from negative 135 degree to zero, right? When it shows up. And then I want it also to be a little bit smaller. So let's make it about 25. And so let's open it up right now and play it. So it's going to rotate in and I want it to scale down, right? When I want to scale down according to the, our master, our master layer. So maybe I need to put this over here. Okay. Let me just, okay. So let's shift it to about, start about five frames down. And then, uh, let's, let's set a keyframe for the scale, uh, for about like, let's just follow this so you can scale it up down to it's over here scale down according to the size of the circle and when it's and then based on that the tiny little hole over here i'm going to scale it down to about three percent and then after that when it expands so let me just increase it to about a hundred percent let's see there we go hundred percent so maybe it's, that, that was a little bit too fast so you can just drag this keyframe over here as you can see yes we might want to grab the keyframes right and just easy ease frame assistant easy ease there we go very nice and then we want to create a new now object parent and put it on top and parent the master to this parent and, and do the same thing for the L. Let's color this uh, parent now layer to something like blue. And we're just going to also have it rotate when it comes in from about 55 to 230. 230 and press S to get the scale. So we want to just have it drift out as it goes from, uh, have it drift uh, from smaller to bigger. So maybe about, um, let's see. So it's playing like this. So I want it basically drift as it expands out. So we can go from 100 to say 120. And let's just push it beyond three seconds, see what happens. So yeah, that's looking pretty good. I think it seems like the rotation is kind of slow. Uh, so let's see, let me just solo the yellow layer. Uh, that's actually okay. But I think just the rotation for the parent seems very slow. So we just want, oh, because let's just right click and easy ease them, the parent. Easy ease the parent. Oh, and unsolo everything. So that's looking a little bit better. And again, I'll leave it to, to you guys to adjust the graph editor. So the next thing we're gonna do is to add the text review. So I already have a text over here, which I'm gonna paste it in. So basically this is a title, right? I'm gonna place this title at the bottom. And then after that, I need to use an, an, an alpha mat of the animation that we have from the bot, from this, uh, this, uh, this layer over here because it's gonna just, you know, expand and review the text. So I can duplicate this bot and just call it mat. And then I'm gonna set the track mat of my title to alpha mat. So it's gonna borrow the, that transparency from above and turn off the mat. And you can see that uh, it's not working very well. 
because oh wait, I gotta change the alpha invert. And then you can see, yes. So it works, but then you can see we have extra bits uh coming out like over here. So we don't want that. So we're gonna just go to our project panel and duplicate our base, uh our base setup and just call it let's call this one mat. And we can just solo the matte silhouette layer and change back the blending mode to uh, back to normal. And so basically it's just, just one single shape layer animating. You can delete everything actually. So I'm gonna delete everything here. So you can ignore that message. Uh, okay, so you're gonna go back to the demo, go to the scene, and I'm just gonna click a uh, whole option or alt on PC and click and drag and drop onto my matte layer. And this will replace it, replace the layer. So if I were to change it, uh, if I were to, yeah, so it replaced the, the, the composition with my selected layer, as you can see over here. And one thing we need to do, so it's still showing up from outside. So we could add this, we can scale this thing down scale the text down to about 90% where you don't see it. And then we can just set a keyframe. So we're cheating a bit just to speed things up. And then maybe it goes to a hundred like that. And we also want to parent, parent this. No, so we want to create a new composition and a, sorry, a new now object. So we're going to add, I guess, an additional animation, let's call it aux, uh, gonna make it blue as well. And I'm gonna parent this to the aux, the title to the aux. And also, yeah, and parent the, the parent layer to aux as well. Uh, so let's see. So it's gonna play like that. Actually, I should have grabbed the scale over here. Uh, actually, no, uh, yeah, I should have grabbed the scale layer over here. Because if I were to parent to, if I were to parent the title to the par to the parent, it's gonna rotate along with uh, our animation over here, as you can see. Uh, give it a sec. See, it's rotating. I don't want that. So we gotta put the scale. We have we gotta have the scale parent and uh, and then also a parent for rotation. So I'm just gonna copy the keyframes here. Right, copy my scale and paste it onto the aux layer and turn off the keyframe. Okay, so now if I play it, if I play it, I will get that drifting effect with my type, with my text review. I'm gonna set the resolution to third so it'll be faster. And I also need to scale it down, it's still very visible. So let's put it 80% for the type. It's still visible, so maybe let's push the keyframe inwards let's push it even more just until we we don't see it yes so something like that so we don't maybe we don't even need to scale it to 100 let's keep it at 80 at all times and let's get rid of the keyframe there we go uh so we have uh all we need to do now is to add the sparkle animation and we can do so by creating a new composition, command N, let's call this sparkle. And let's create a comp 250 by 250. And let's make it 16 frame long, click OK. And we're gonna go into our rectangle tool, double click on it, press UU, and un click un uncheck constraint proportion, reduce the X to zero, and the size could stay, uh, the size could be 35 pixel. And you want to have like maybe a field of tree, right? A field of tree, and I mean a stroke of tree, uh, tree points, maybe even five if you want to. And we are going to go add repeater and do the same thing as our radio circle setup. Four copies, transform, and then set the position to zero, and increase the rotation by ninety degree. And finally, let's increase the anchor point to something like maybe 50 pixel. And if you right click, if you were to right click, select the layer, right click. Oops, why is it not showing up? 
if I were to right click on the layer, again, we need to fix the center po the anchor point. So right click, go to transform and fit to come height. So this will just center everything like that. And uh, what we can do next is to add a trim path. So add trim path. And then we can, let me just turn everything else off. Open up the trim path, set a keyframe, actually change everything to 50 first. Set a keyframe at zero for the end and go down to eight frames and put it to a hundred. Set a keyframe for the start and then go down to the end of the composition and set it to hundred. Now if I play it, I get this animation. You might want to fine tune the repeater and maybe have it like come closer to something like that. Uh, okay, this seems good. And I'm just going to transform fit to come height. So we're in the center and we can also just grab, um, let's just select everything, all the keyframes, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Very nice. And then what we can do is to reduce the stroke because it seems really thick and we want to get rid of the fill as well. Okay, there you go. We have the sparkle ready. And let's go back into our, let's finish up. Let's put everything together. So we're going to go somewhere around here and put in the sparkle. And we also want the, sp the sparkle to be parented to, uh, to the parent. Really. And then we can set, set it to be, let's set it to be red. Right. And then we're just going to arrange it. So somewhere here where, where we first see the text. So somewhere here and then command shift H to show, you know, the handles and I'm going to scale it down to about actually 20%. So, so it doesn't have to look so big. So I guess, so you can just randomly scatter them first as many workflow and you can scale all, all, the, all, all of them differently. Let's scale it like that. And I'm just going to randomly stagger them like this. Well, it's not really random, but it's just, <laughs> it's just sequence. So maybe I can have two at the same time. Uh, maybe I'll have this and this coming out at the same time. So have fun with this uh, possibility uh, infinite. So let's try and play it and see what happens. Here we go. We have the sparkles. And last of all, what we need to do is to create a new adjustment layer. And this is for to abstract the motion posterize time. So we'll call this posterize. Go to my effects and preset panel, command five for shortcut and type in posterize time. And I'm going to set the frame rate down to 12. So it gives you that, uh, uh, that, what do you call that? Um, the cell animation look as if it was like, uh, it's basically stylized the motion. And, um, Maybe just to tidy things up, let's go to the parent where this, let's go to the aux parent and just push this keyframe all the way to eight seconds. So you're just going to keep drifting. And we're done. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Please like, share, subscribe so this tutorial can get to more people. You can download the project file in the link in the description below. And if you made something with this tutorial, please tag me on Instagram at Desmond Do because I love to see what you came up with on your own. Alright, that's all I have for you guys. I'll see you next time.